In this video, I'm going to go over using electric stimulation during just static sitting, rope repetition exercises, and in some simulated functional movements. So I have the two uh, lead pads here on my forearm here on the flexor mass. And so when this kicks on, you're going to see my muscles start to jump here. It kind of wants to pull my wrist into flexion and some of my fingers kind of want to come down. So just have that set. And that's preference. You can go through the different settings on the machines. Um, this one is made by Richmar. I like this product. It's both a TENS unit and an NMES or Neuromuscle uh, Electric Stimulator. And so it's, it's a really neat tool, pretty inexpensive. I do have the bigger units at my clinic, the more, you know, ones for like commercial use and they're all FDA cleared. And so, but I do like this for just that portable uh, availability for patients just, you know, in the clinic or things they can send home with them to use. You can start off just having the patient sit statically, let the machine run, don't do anything else. You let that sit and run, maybe that goes for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Then you can start to have the patient when the machine kicks on, I have it here in my flexor mass. You can put this anywhere on the body for the most part that's safe and within the guidelines. So the quadriceps, the shoulder muscles, the bicep, whatever, and it's gonna contract. I'm gonna have my patient flex the wrist and then also curl the fingers down. So we wanna activate and actively use all those muscles that we're trying to stimulate with the stem. We're just kind of giving that, that extra, extra input or additional uh, kind of boost for the muscle contraction. And so I have my patients I'd say every time that it kicks on, you feel it, make a fist and kind of come into wrist flexion so you kind of look like this. All right, we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna progress over to a dumbbell. We're gonna hold a light dumbbell. And now when it kicks on, we're gonna curl up the dumbbell in a wrist flexion curl. I'm just gonna curl up here. And we're gonna hold that the whole time the machine is running. I'm gonna have the patient hold this position and then it's gonna kick back off. Now I do have this set to kick off and on pretty fast. So it's on for five seconds off for five seconds, that's pretty fast. And so in a normal situation, I would have it off for a longer period of time uh, just to give the patient a little bit of a break and time for the tissue to recover. And we're going into flexion. Now, this could be on the wrist extensors. I mean, if this were on the back side here, you could go into wrist extension or deviation, whatever you wanted to do. So you would go through the dumbbell. I would have them do that maybe somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna use the dumbbell there. Then we're gonna go over to, I have a rolled up cuff weight here now. This is a pretty heavy cuff weight to do this with, especially if the person's had nerve injury, you know, some uh, tendinopathy issue, maybe it's carpal tunnel or, you know, different conditions here. You had some surgical repairs or post fracture or whatever. So you want to be easy and not do something that's too heavy too soon. And the same thing, we're going to hold this just in a general grasp, you know, however you want to do it. This one's pretty big. So this is a, could be a little uncomfortable for someone's thumb if they had a thumb surgery or, or issue. But just for the purpose of the video, I just have this rolled up like this. Now I feel the stem kick on and I'm going to curl up just like this. So I've got this curled up. I would take this a step further and also have the patient who would practice on when this, you know, uh, kicks on, they curl up, maybe they reach forwards, like they're going to place it on a shelf or actually physically have them place it on a shelf. When the machine kicks off, they relax. If I had several cuff weights, I could stack them up here and have the patient pick them up, reach, and then let go. You could go through that just to simulate a little more of a functional movement. Then you can also uh, use a cone. I don't like to just have patients go through rope repetition stacking of cones without a purpose. Um, I do like to use stem or weights or bands and add things into this. Put the patient in a standing position if they also have balance issues or you want to work on some sort of dual tasking. But you can take a cone and do the same thing just to work on the grass. You can flip it around, kind of do whatever you, you know, different um, ways of doing it there. But if you're going to go just with cone stacking, you've got the stem on, contract it in. This also works well if you're going to use a second channel on the shoulder for maybe shoulder flexion, having the patient reach out, stacking the cone, relaxing, coming back. I do like to use that with stem. Again, I normally never have the patient just stack cones for the purpose of stacking cones, kind of a pet peeve of mine over the years. So I definitely don't ever do that just, just as a static standalone. Um, I, using the uh, Alpha uh, Grips bands here. Now I know we're going, this is a uh, flexion, wrist flexion and a finger flexion video. But I just wanted to show an application for this that you can do uh, four finger extension and combined wrist extension. I really like this if the patient's having a tendinopathy on the elbow. Um, so I just wanted to throw this into the video. I'm going to let it turn off. I'm going to move the pads over before they kick back on and shock me. So now I've got it here on the extensor mass of the wrist that's going to pull the wrist back. I have my bands on here or band on here. I'm going to go back into wrist extension. I feel this contracting the muscles and then I'm going to extend my fingers here 
and then I'm going to relax and drop back down into flexion. This would also be, uh, you could apply this to someone that maybe had a radial nerve issue or irritation, maybe radial nerve injury. You could put that stem on there and then eventually work up to going into finger extension, wrist extension. Again, you can take the dumbbell and do the same thing. You can take the cuff weight and do the same thing. You can also take the, uh, the cone, put the cone in your hand, do the same thing. You know, just have it there. You're going to reach out and grasp it. And when you grasp it, you're going to pull it back into extension. And maybe you're working on placing this onto a shelf or something. Just the same as you would do a flexion. There's a lot of possibilities with that. I just want to show a few options that you could do this with with uh, a stem unit. Now again, this is not with this setup on a TENS setting or pre-modulated or IFC, also known as interferential current. Those are more for pain control, not for uh, retraining muscles or what's called muscle re-ed. So you definitely want to make sure that you have the proper unit for that or you're seeing a healthcare provider that's trained and knows how to operate those because you, you could hurt yourself with some of these units. You just want to be careful. That is using electric stimulation during uh, some static progressing into dynamic and functional movement patterns and uh, use for the upper extremity here. Thanks so much.